Hi everyone, welcome to another Unexpected Mail. Yes, I get a lot of mail, and I'm always impatient to open it, because there's always something inside these packages that I need for a current project. Let's just get straight into it. I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's start with this one. This is from Banggood. I can tell because of the packaging. It says on the front, circuit board times three and controller board times five. So I know what this is going to be. There's going to be some microcontrollers that I ordered. Okay, rubbish on the floor. Rubbish on the floor. Let's see if we just pull it out. Okay. So what do we have inside here? Let's have a look. We've got two different types of boards in here. The first one we have is like you've already seen in a previous one of my videos. So you don't need a knife for this one. These are Arduino Nano compatible boards. So these boards are using the Atmega 328P microcontroller chip at uh, 16 megahertz. And I believe they're five volt boards, not 3.3 volt. And these particular ones came with separate headers. So as you can see, they just get soldered on here. I uh, wanted these ones without headers so I can choose to put the headers on or not if I wanted to. Because I've got some projects where I'm just gonna solder wires directly to the board. I don't wanna use a header and put it into a breadboard so I just want to have it be able to sit flush. Okay, so I've got five of those. You've seen this before, I don't really need to go through these again. That's pretty cool. And the other thing I got, and these you haven't seen before, these are Wemos D1 Mini microcontroller boards. And that was a fail, opening that package. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, these are an Espressive ESP8266 development board with four megabytes of flash and an ESP12 chip, microcontroller chip. So these are Wi-Fi compatible boards made by Wemos. So these um, have less IO pins than the Nano, for instance. As you can see here, there's a lot more pins on there for GPIOs, but they have Wi-Fi. So I can program these to actually connect to the internet and be a like a web server or they can go online and grab data as a web client. There's all sorts of things we can do and they're actually quite small. So I've got three of those. I've got some projects coming up that require internet connectivity. I'll put these back inside the package. Okay, so these are microcontrollers. So three of these, five of the nanos. Look forward to using them in my projects. Okay, what is this next one? This says two modules. Okay, it's an eBay purchase, I'm pretty sure. I have no idea what two modules they are. So let's open this up without hopefully destroying it. I think I need to sharpen my blade. Ah, uh, I know what these are. Awesome. God, this took a long time to get here. Okay, these are, I'll leave that one in there, this one's, yeah, I'll open that one, got less packaging on it. These are little TFT screens, if I can get it out. These are 2.4 inch TFT screens that have, oh, that's interesting. I thought it was a little micro SD, but it's not just a standard SD card slot. Okay, anyway, they've got an SD card slot at the back. They run through an SPI interface. So can pull this off and get access to the pins. As you can see, that's the headers there. And they've got a 240 by 320 resolution. So they're full color, they're nice and small. I don't know if these ones have touchscreen or not. I'm pretty sure they don't. Now these are using the ILI9341 chipset, which I don't even know where that is. Maybe it's under the screen. Interesting. Not a lot of hardware on the back of that. Anyway, so these are for some upcoming projects. I've actually got quite a few TFT screens of different sizes and different capabilities that I'll maybe go through on a different video. Uh, these ones, as, as I said, they're quite small, 2.4 inch. 
I've got a couple of 3.5s which are much larger, but these are just a really great size to be able to uh, put inside projects to get a full color display. They're bigger than what you can get with the OLED screens at the moment, and they're considerably cheaper. I believe these cost me uh, $14 with free shipping for two of them. And uh, the OLED screens, the color ones anyway, are about $19 or $16 each, and they're a much smaller screen. Yeah, spot these in a future project. Okay, next one. This is an interesting one. This has come in like a cardboard envelope. So, and it's very, very thin. But I think I have an idea of what is going to be inside it. So let's open it up. I'll so open it like a letter. Okay, and we have... Ooh! This is not what I thought it was going to be. How interesting. Okay, I mean, I was expecting these, but I thought these were going to be wireless transmitters receivers. But actually what they are are little development boards based on the AT Tiny 85 microcontroller chip. So, which is this one here, I believe. Tiny little chip, yeah, that'll be a regulator. Tiny little chip, plugs into USB port to program it so it doesn't have an actual port, like a USB port. It actually just plugs directly into the USB slot of a Type-A USB port. And it's got a few GPIOs on it, not many. As you can see, it's quite small, but perfect for tiny little projects that don't require a lot of I.O. ports and something's quite small. So there you go. I ordered those again a very long time ago. I think I ordered the same time as I ordered the screens. It would have been at least five weeks, I'd say, to get to me through eBay on China. I'll put a link to the products in the description. Okay, what else have we got? This one is, what does it say? It doesn't say anything, but it's local. Sender from South Dandong in Victoria, Australia. Okay. So, I don't know what this is. Let's see what this is. Oh, there we go. There's an envelope in an envelope. Two envelopes in an envelope. Made in China. I would assume these are both the same. Let's pick one of them and open it up. I'm too scared to cut it because I don't know what's inside it. Okay. Hmm. Maybe these are different products. 0566, 0547. Let's open them both up, shall we? I think they are either different products or I've ordered too many of the same thing. That'll be interesting. Hmm. So, what are these? Let's open one up and find out. Let's keep them separate just in case they are different. If I, if they are what I think they are. These are wireless transceiver modules. Okay, these are tiny. Wow, I don't even know if you'll be able to see these properly. So these are 2.4 gigahertz wireless receivers, transceivers. So what it, that means, let's just open two of them up, is what they're designed for is to be able to talk to each other via wireless. Now these are using the NRF24L01 chipsets. And basically you can program these, one as a sender and one as a receiver, to be able to communicate with each other over longish distance, meters, maybe more, I have no idea how far. So I want to use these in one of my projects to be able to have two different portions of the project be able to communicate with each other without having to put wires between them. So that's quite exciting, except what are these? They look exactly the same. I believe they might have sent me two packages of the same item. That's quite interesting. I'm 
pretty sure I ordered three, and I'm pretty sure I have six. Well, there you go. Okay, let's put these back in the bag. Put the um, phone back on. So you basically hook these up, you know, with a, a microcontroller with an Arduino or similar, and you can talk to each microcontroller at each end via these. It's just a, like a, a networking link between the two. I'm not quite sure why they come in packs of three, or sold in packs of three, but they, the way they are. Wow, well, I can't get that back in the bag. Okay, I'll put these over here, out of the way, the rubbish way, and we have one package left. Just the one, but I know what this is. It says two light strip. And these are light strips, but they're not a normal RGB light strip like you might see. Well, I hope they're not, because that's not what I ordered. But these are. Yep. These are strips of the NeoPixel LEDs, just like I used on my seven segment display, my Neo seven segment. So this is a reel of 300 pixels that are connected to each other. And they work exactly the same way as the other ones do, the ones I put on my board, that they've got power going through, they've got ground going through, and then they've got data in, data out, data in, data out. And these all connect to each other and allow you to light them up in different colors. But what you can do with them, which is really cool, is you can cut them across the copper connectors and then resolder wires onto them and make strips any length you want to. So for instance, if I wanted to set up a, a four by four array of LEDs, I could just cut up four strips of four, put them onto a board, wire them into each other in a continuous connection, power them, put data through and have a four by four LED matrix. So I'm not planning on using these as one long big strip of 300. I'm planning on using these to cut them up and use them in different projects where I want to have RGB LEDs, but I want to be able to use them. You know, I might want to, for instance, wrap some around inside something or put something underneath something else to light it up. So this is pretty cool. So I bought two, two packs of these. So two lots of 300, that's 600 NeoPixel LEDs. That's a lot, seems like a lot, but I'm sure I'll find lots of uses for them. Okay, so that is it for this unexpected mail. There wasn't a huge amount of items this time, but I needed these microcontrollers out because I need to use them in a project. And I needed the, uh, the Remos D1 Minis out because I need those in another project that I'm working on right now. And I really want to have a play with these TFT screens to see how bright and how how fast I can get them to work. Um, obviously with, uh, you know, 240 by 320 pixels, there's quite a lot of pixels to push. And a microcontroller like this one, there's only 16 megahertz, isn't really going to be able to, you know, fill a screen with images very fast. But other microcontrollers I've got that are much faster, that run at 48 megahertz or more, should do a really good job of being able to put pictures on their screens. Just let everyone know I'm planning to do a microcontroller demystified video where I'm basically going to lay out all the microcontrollers I've got, which is a very small portion of all the types of microcontrollers available. And I'm going to kind of just go through them all and explain, you know, what all the differences are and, and how they, you know, kind of work the type of projects that they're useful in. And, um, and then I might actually do some other videos on some more specific details about particular boards. Anyway, that's it. Please don't forget to subscribe and like and share my videos around. It really helps my channel to grow. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.